Are you, are you? We're recording. Oh, hi. Hello. So this is Melissa Irachi. Hi. Is that how I pronounce it? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Yes. I don't know. I'm always pronouncing the Italian names wrong, even though. Yes, it's Irachi. That's how it's Irachi. Yeah, we had Simone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you look Marco Gianni sometimes. And Marco Gianni, yeah, no one's ever pronounced it right except <laughs> Italians. And yeah. um, so Melissa is a homeopathic doctor and a nutritionist, and she is my buddy at Bloor West Wellness. She works in uh, my clinic with me, and yes. we're in the same clinic, which yes. is now closed. It has been closed for three weeks. Mm-hmm. So we're yeah. thing via our social distance, and we're going to talk about nutrition because Melissa is a nutrition expert. And has something really cool going on with Mondays with Mel. Yes. So I think of a reaction of being at home and not being able to connect with as many patients as I'm used to. I'm doing Mondays with Mel live. I just love the live experience. So every Mondays at noon, um, I go on to my live Instagram, which is Mel's Holistic Health, if you want to look me up. And I go on there right at noon, and we usually answer some of your health questions. So I encourage you to send questions beforehand through DM, if that's easy for you. And then often, I just found that we're making a lot of recipes. So today, I actually filmed episode three, and we made gluten-free, nut-free, dairy-free ice cream sandwiches with (laughs) strawberry ice cream. So it's a mouthful. But, you know, with Easter around the corner, I know that some of us are thinking about dropping off some baked goods to family members and loved ones since we're not going to be celebrating, you know, Mm -hmm. face-to-face, I'm assuming. Some people are going to be just dropping off, saying hi at the window, and then Mm -hmm. taking off. So, so yeah. Yeah, like, I'm seeing, like, weddings being postponed and dinner parties being done over Zoom and just the whole gamut of things, like, birthdays celebrated with one or two people, like, a lot of micro-weddings and... So this is kind of cool. It's almost like everyone could prepare the same food and then share it together without actually sharing the same food. You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, have a virtual dinner party. Yeah. <laughs> so dairy-free, gluten-free, nut-free, ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. Dairy-free ice cream sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. joking with my friend because um, we used to, back in the day, back in another lifetime, uh, on her birthday, I'd get her a Dairy Queen cake, queen cake and I was like, I'll get you a gluten-free, dairy-free, dairy queen, sugar-free, dairy queen cake, <laughs> aka a plate of air. <laughs> but your ice cream sandwiches are not made of air. What's in them? No, no. So it's actually really simple. We do some full-fat coconut milk and strawberries, mm. blend it up. Yeah. Um, and if you yeah. want it super creamy, add more coconut milk. And if you're making for kids, sometimes kids need a little bit extra sweet. So adding a tablespoon or two of maple syrup just mm-hmm. to balance out the flavor. But sometimes I just blend up some um, strawberries on their own and make a strawberry sorbet. It's really easy. Mm. I mean, as long as you don't burn out your blender motor, which is what <laughs> almost happened to me today on Instagram Live. Um, <laughs> but it turned out really well. Yeah, so you guys can uh, go on. And it's actually still posted mm-hmm. live, um, although I guess we're filming this video and it might get posted later. So mm-hmm. it's not on there. But the recipes will be on my website, so you can find the information mm-hmm. there. Yeah, like, do you upload your live and and store it? Can people? So I upload my live and I store it, and it goes on Instagram for twenty four hours. Today was the first day that I'm trying to back it up on Facebook Live, so it might actually Mm -hmm. be there right now. I haven't had an opportunity to check in yet, but it might be there permanently. This is great. I love this idea, and I also love the idea of if I was going to make an ice cream sandwich with all the regular things, the dairy, the gluten, everything, it would be more work than what you're doing, and. And I think, you know, in, when it's coconut cream and strawberries and maple syrup, it tastes delicious because you can access all of those flavors because it's so simple. And yeah, so exactly. Simple. Yeah. And yeah. it's interesting because, I mean, so we were talking about just before we started recording the perils of grocery shopping in this age. Mm-hmm. And I just got back from grocery shopping and the air is rife with anxiety. There are lineups. Everybody's dressed like they're about to perform surgery and the shelves are empty which has this ominous kind of feeling to it and so it's something that I wasn't a huge fan of grocery shopping in the past now has become a huge chore and so it's all about like getting as many well not overstocking but having enough supplies of raw ingredients and not so we're not sort of in that place where we're going out to get food or where we're running to the store for a pint of ice cream so it's really about working with what you have in your pantry and what you have in your fridge right now, it seems like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And um, I make a lot of smoothies. So I always have a freezer full of frozen fruits ready to go. 
Mm -hmm. um, another great dairy-free ice cream um, option is I, uh, frozen bananas. I mean, I can't tell you how many mm -hmm. frozen bananas. I just find them at the back of my freezer. They disappear for a while and I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> I have some more smoothie options and dairy-free ice cream options. But the great thing about the strawberry ice cream or berries in general, they're just lower on the glycemic load. So mm -hmm. um, a lot better in terms of the sugar response. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, you're adding in the fiber and the micronutrients. Yeah. And I just thought of this joke about frozen bananas where it's like, hey, do you want a frozen banana now? And they're like, no, but I want a regular banana later. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so what are you finding? So you're working with clients still online and you're also yeah. working with people via, via social media, providing service to people with questions. So what are you finding people are asking? Well, I'm finding that a lot of people are feeling overwhelmed being at home and getting used to the new, you know, the new dynamic of working from home, but also having your family running around at the same time, maybe having a partner also working from home. Um, and that meals kind of get shifted to the end of the day. I feel like when we come home from a day's worth of work, we're tired, but it's a new environment. It's a shift in energy and we're eager and ready to make a new recipe or whatever we have planned. But we're, we're all sort of hanging out in the same living space to, to mm -hmm. kind of shift gears and get into the meal planning and meal prepping stage is getting a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. So people are still looking for, you know, ready to go, um, meal plans. People are still looking for doing meal prep once a week. Like I feel like now people are getting into it a bit more. It may have slipped in these last few weeks, but mm -hmm. people are still looking at meal planning because, you know, we're just as busy. We're just doing it all from home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Like we're cutting out the commute time, but when you factor in all the other things that start to add up, the attention that you have to pay to childcare and you know how everything takes a little bit longer when you get out of the house. It's yeah, it seems like it's, mm -hmm. there isn't all this time to prepare food. Yeah. yeah. And especially what you said about going grocery shopping. I mean, that's a huge stressor. I'm not, I used to love grocery shopping actually. It's fun. I like to roam the aisles and see what's new. Now it's pretty stressful in and out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying not to go to heavily populated grocery stores mm -hmm. and living in Toronto it's better because you can access little markets, but definitely for people who live in suburbs or subdivisions, all you have is these huge grocery stores. So you're definitely trying to do one shopping trip, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, but people are having a hard time going once every two weeks, especially getting enough raw produce and, and, you know, live greens and live fruit mm -hmm. food into your homes. Right. We can all leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can eat cans of beans and rice and, you know, things like that. But definitely, um, you know, missing that live, mm -hmm. the live foods, yeah, the live mm -hmm. phytonutrients and all that good stuff that you can only get from fresh, raw produce. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's different, right? Because we're, like you said, in completely different routines. So normally you might go out to eat on Friday. If you're not doing that anymore, you might find your produce is um, getting used up more quickly. You're ending up with an empty yes. fridge at different times. And so the regular routines aren't cutting it anymore, it seems like. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you might be able to meal prep, but really you're meal prepping for maybe three, four days. Factoring mm -hmm. in, you know, Fridays you go out for lunch with coworkers and Friday nights you might, you know, go out with family members. And but now we're not doing that anymore. So we're thinking about breakfast, lunch and dinner seven days a week. It's getting mm -hmm. overwhelming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like even yeah. I have a good friend that lives downtown and normally he eats all three. So I have tried to exert my influence, but you know, I've tried, um, he eats all three meals out and now he's cooking all three meals in. So it's like this radical shift from normal, yeah. the normal way of life, um, which is good. But that's such a positive, yeah. Hmm. I mean, it, it's, you know, so maybe when this is over, uh, if we do resume normal, he'll cook 1.5 meals from home, you know? Yeah. <laughs> there might be a shift there permanently as, we start to take on these tasks because I find, so I don't know, I'm actually curious because I find that compliance or sticking to food plans, especially for my patients. So it's like such a, a foundational piece, food. When I think about the basics that someone needs to know to support their mental health, their physical health, it's all mm -hmm. like food is such a huge pillar, obviously, because um, food is our medicine. But at the same time, it's so difficult to stick to plans. And, you know, even I find with meal plans, it can be difficult for people to get their head around it. And I think there are some people, like maybe you or I, who are really into nutrition, who are really into food and kind of don't mind thinking about it. And others that, that like my friend who um, 
lives abroad who texted me and was like, can you just tell me what to eat and just mm-hmm. want to be fed? You know, <laughs> there are yeah. people who just want to, want to be fed. Yeah. And fair enough, because they have other things to worry about. But what do you find helpful for someone who's ju- like just starting to cook and meal plan and like figure out what to buy and trying to get their head around it? You know, whereas before maybe... Yeah we're just eating pasta that they're not made or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that it's really important to just focus on simple foods. I feel like when we start Googling all these fancy recipes and we need to, and thinking about going to the grocery store, picking up, you know, 10 different spices to make one dish, dish is overwhelming. So just focusing on maybe a well-balanced plate and the foods mm-hmm. itself, and then simple things like salt, pepper, some ghee or grass-fed butter, you know, to supplement the flavor. The foods, the flavor of the foods will come out on their own. We don't have to overcomplicate our recipes too much. I mean, I'm Italian, you're Italian, so Italians love their pasta, but they also love their simple cooking, right? Mm -hmm. Like yesterday, I think I just made some uh, kidney beans from scratch, dried kidney beans, and I just mixed them up with some rapini, garlic, Mm -hmm. ginger, and chili peppers, Mm -hmm. like really simple, but delicious flavors. So it doesn't have to be complicated. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's tip number one. Don't get too overwhelmed Mm -hmm. Um, and try to do spins on your favorites, right? If you like Mm -hmm. Thai dishes, perhaps getting some recipes to make your favorite Thai curry dishes that you can easily make uh, healthy options for with some coconut milk and curry Mm -hmm. full of turmeric, so good for you and anti-inflammatory. There's a lot of simple dishes available. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so things like that. I think focusing on simple and focusing on your favorite foods and starting there. Mm -hmm. Because I often do like takeout once a week, I order from my local Thai food place. And now I'm not doing that as often. So I'm trying to access these recipes of basically your favorite dishes that you would normally eat out, um, Mm -hmm. making them at home. Yeah. So they start to crave your Thai foods. Like, how can I just quickly yes. make, you know, green curry or something like that? Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot easier than, than a lot of people think. Just a few mm-hmm. ingredients. It doesn't take much to make your favorite dishes. Mm-hmm. And you can also make your own spin. So if the recipe calls for yeah. a tablespoon of sugar in the sauce, which is not something that you were aware of previously, yeah. you can simply omit it. And it might not taste exactly the same, but you can kind of tweak yeah. it to 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 health wash it a little bit you know and exactly yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think people when they look up recipes they're always looking for that perfect recipe but just mm-hmm. grab what you can find and then just know that you can sub things out i mean baking i love to bake and this is a perfect example i can easily grab a baking recipe try not to get too stressed out with the fact that it calls for you know eggs sugar dairy mm-hmm. just sub it out so if it says milk i easily add some oat milk or coconut milk I'll make a flaxed egg if I'm making it vegan for family members who are vegan. Mm -hmm. So it can be, it can be really easy. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it can be really easy. And there's lots of resources online Mm -hmm. to help access more healthy alternative options. Yeah. Like what I'm hearing is like, don't be scared. Like, you know, and I think Mm -hmm. both of us are kind of experimenters and aren't afraid to make mistakes. So it's like, Oh, this cookie rest or this cake recipe looks cool. Let me throw almond milk in instead of dairy milk and see what happens. And yeah. You know, it might not be perfect or look perfect, but you know, I have a dog. Chances are it'll taste good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, Chances are it'll taste really good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sometimes yeah. I'm baking and, and Coco's like at the, my dog is like at the <laughs> oven waiting to see what's coming out. And so I'm like, yeah. it doesn't matter what it looks or smells or tastes like, like at least he's into it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure for him it smells good. So he knows it will be good. Yeah. As long exactly. as it's not burnt, he's happy. Yeah. At least somebody approves. Yeah. And, uh, and we were talking about two um, uh, cravings and things that people have been noticing, like you were mentioning when you first started, when, when all of this first started, when our clinic closed and we started working from home, Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. you were, your appetite was gone. And yeah, I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone was in a rush to try to figure out what the new normal is going to be. And if you're a type A, you probably wanted to figure that out as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. So I felt like we were doing a lot of work at the computer. I mean, we were interfacing a lot too, trying to get things yeah. uh, organized and established, uh, you know, missing lunch. I think I had like a cracker mm. with peanut butter, a gluten-free cat with peanut butter one day and definitely missing breakfast. And by the time dinner would come, I'm um, feeling like disillusioned to cook, you know, what's in the pantry, what's in the refrigerator ready to go, which is usually not much. Mm-hmm. And then the flip. So now that we're getting at home and things are, you know, I guess the sun is shining. So we're feeling a little bit more optimistic. I've been baking a lot. Um, and now the flip has happened where we're eating or I'm eating a lot of 
cookies. Meals are getting bigger. I feel like I'm having two lunches, not just one lunch a day. So eating a lot more food. So how can we bring this back into balance? Because I feel like this yo-yoing is probably common with a lot of people right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, humans, so our food has always been on a schedule and it's always been very social. So when Mm -hmm. we're away from the people that we're normally around in our routines, and it might not be family, it might be your coworkers during lunchtime, right? Like everyone has their lunch routine. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think as well, I mean, a lot of us live at home uh, by ourselves. And so, um, you know, you're, you're not around people for meal times, or you're just around one person or that person is an essential worker and has to work outside of the home. So our routines are not anchored in the people that we're with normally, and also not in our, in our routines. Like you were saying, like if you have a commute, you come home, you start cooking or you have your set lunch hour. Um, yeah. but now I know I'm feeling the same way. Like I'll have breakfast and then I'll have second breakfast and I'll have <laughs> lunch and I'm like, what time is it? 11. <laughs> and, yeah. and so it's, yeah, it's like, and I think a lot of people yeah. are feeling the same way where it's like, I have the munchies. I just don't, yes. you know, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so what are you yeah, finding? Yeah. So doing- I'm finding that definitely days that I'm feeling like I'm extra munchy day are days that I'm dehydrated. So hydration is a challenge for me always. And I know it's a challenge for a lot of clients and patients. If you're feeling like you're about to snack on something, you know, drinking some water, I like to drink, actually I have my chlorophyll water with me right here. Uh, uh-huh. It helps detoxification and also helps with cleansing and increasing oxygen in the bloodstream. So helping, you know, mm. detoxify. So that's been helpful as well. Um, and lots of herbal teas. So I'm loving green tea. Um, loving green tea, cut out a lot of coffee, but I'm drinking green tea maybe two to three times a day, which is great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm finding that warm beverages do help with those sugar cravings. I don't know if you find the same thing, like having a tea is a lot more satisfying than drinking a glass of water mm-hmm. when you're feeling dehydrated or if you're trying to keep a sugar craving at bay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of the time, straight water doesn't feel very hydrating. It just really depends on your hydration levels in terms of your sodium balance. But I love that actually, because I think Another thing that we forget is that our water intake and fluid intake is also on routine. And if you're working in an office, it's a, it's a break. Like even in our clinic, we had our water cooler. So between patients, yeah. I always have water. But now, yeah, hours can go by without me filling up a drink. Yeah, or- it's so true. Yeah, because, you know, we have a patient coming in once an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, every hour you're checking in with them. Would you like some water? You're checking in with yourself as well. Like, I better refill my cup. So totally. Or even as a student like in between classes. Um, yeah. So I actually really like that. And that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think um, we forget, right. That it's, it could just be hydration. You know, we're not on that mm-hmm. schedule with hydrating as well. And, um, and I love the herbal tea idea too, because even when I was a student way back, which is actually way longer ago than mm-hmm. I, <laughs> than <it seems. laughs> <I'm fine>. yeah. <laughs> but I remember, you know, in between classes, you'd want a snack because there's this sense of, woohoo, I did it. Like I made it through immunology. Uh, And then you'd want sort of a break kind of thing. And also our bodies aren't a big fan of just being still and, and, and food has this grounding effect. It gives us this kind of reward hit, but then it also kind of like grounds us to be able to sit still. And I find tea, especially a calming tea, like a chamomile or lemon balm or something, it helps with the same purpose where it's, it gives us that sort of like reward. It's like a little you know, um, a different thing that you can experience, a different taste, it's warming, um, good for digestion, and it also helps to kind of calm you and, and mm-hmm. help you focus too, so. Yeah, it helps to kind of slow down, help with the focus, and it's something that you can look forward to as well. I mean, you know that your tea break is coming up, so you can kind of take a break, turn on the kettle, pick your favorite tea. I like to, you know, take my mug out on the balcony or to the windowsill for a good, like, five minutes, try to take a breath or two and then carry on with whatever, whatever you're doing. So oh, yeah. these kind of, yeah, these little breaks are helpful. It's not just mm. about the snacks. Yeah. And tea, like I remember, I mean, tea is, is a ritual. So you might have an anxiolytic herb in your tea, but it's also the mm. taking the moment, like you were saying, brewing, waiting for the water to boil, waiting for the tea to steep, sitting somewhere to enjoy it, waiting for it to cool down. There's a lot of waiting with tea. Yeah. <laughs> and it a lot actually, of waiting, a lot of breathing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually, it's a great strategy. Um, and the chlorophyll water too is also something like, it was one of my strategies um, in the office mm-hmm. was to have water yeah. that wasn't water just for, uh, to mix it up, you know? Um, 
So I love exactly. that strategy. And I also, a, a reminder for myself is protein, you know, I mean, so this is something that we preach to, to people constantly. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's, it's difficult because time and time again, so I'll get the munchies and I'll, and I'll feel cravings and I'll be like, I don't know, going for the frozen, like, okay, I've got frozen cherries. Oh, oh maybe it's this, or maybe I want mm -hmm. oatmeal or like, I'll kind of go around and try and figure out what I'm trying, yes. what I want to eat. Then I just eat some protein. Maybe it's chicken. Maybe it's hummus, and that craving just shuts right off, and it's done. Mm -hmm. But it's yes. you know it's a, it's not always apparent. It's not always obvious that that's what you need. And so sometimes it's just cognitively thinking things like tea, protein, hot water, right? Yes. Um, we're really what that's you want as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I, I, yeah, I think that's so true because automatically our brain goes to a sweet treat. But you're hungry, right? If, if, you're, if you're feeling restless or if you're feeling tired, chances are you need energy, right? So we can make a coffee or we can make a snack. And what kind of snack or food is going to actually fuel you to give you energy to move forward? So something more balanced, like you said, hummus, mm -hmm. um, something with, that's protein filled, some nuts or seeds, um, mm -hmm. something like that is going to sustain you a lot more. And I've actually been craving fats. I mean, this past mm -hmm. weekend, I've been dousing everything in olive oil. Hmm. And, and I've been eating coconut oil right from the spoon. So I know there's an imbalance happening. I mean, eating more carbs and less meat, I feel like access to grocery stores for meat um, is what's causing kind of eating more carbohydrates and things stored in the pantries. So, you know, remembering to incorporate those healthy fats where you can. I know people are eating out of their pantries a lot more than usual, and that's okay. Um, just know to keep, you know, your carbs in check and balancing them with fat and that they're high protein uh, carbohydrates as well. So legumes and lentils and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I like that actually is making sure that we're getting enough fats. Cause that's another reason why we might just keep feeling hangry and not quite satisfied. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. These are all things that, that shut off that craving response. And yes, I mean, we're not saying don't eat <laughs> obviously <laughs> if you're hungry, but I think that yeah. there's sometimes these signals of, this insatiable kind of urge that um, is, is, is our body still asking for something, but not always what we're compelled to give it when we feel those signals. Like you said, we might want to, we might interpret that as wanting sweets or sweets may be the first thing that comes to mind when really it's about protein, it's about hydration, it's about fats, it's yeah. about sodium. It could be all kinds of different things. It, it could be that you just need a break and you want to go for a walk yes. and go outside. Yeah, it could be that you need exercise, you need some fresh air, and that's what you're craving. Yeah, what so it's just being in tune. Yeah, I find that, you know, I don't know if you've been experiencing this, but I've been baking a lot. I mean, I mm. love to bake, so the opportunity is here now, so I've been baking a lot. Uh, but I didn't take into account that I would have all these delicious desserts and cookies ready to go <laughs> at my leisure. So I'm trying to drop them off at family, uh, family members' houses and get them out of my house. Mm -hmm. but, but they're around, right? So so it's starting to click in so i i always try to tell patients like if you can tune in to how you feel and eliminating sugar or working with a practitioner like for all your patients they probably worked with you for a while they know they know how their bodies feel when they're consuming a lot of sugar and they know when they feel how they feel when they're off sugar mm -hmm. so definitely today and yesterday um that plateau has been reached in terms of how much more sugar can my body handle and you know you start having symptoms i think i woke up with a sore throat Mm -hmm. yesterday mm -hmm. um i know that sugar um you know breakouts behind the ears with the lymphatic system being mm -hmm. totally sugar and a sluggish lymphatic system and you know mm -hmm. that sweet that's taste in your mouth and you know a white a white coated tongue all signs that sugar is mm -hmm. in excess so i'm trying mm -hmm. to bring that into balance mm -hmm. yeah can you say a little bit more about that there's a white coat on the tongue we're talking about dysbiosis basically yes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dysbiosis and, and sugar overgrowth, and it could be a candida overgrowth. So if it's showing mm -hmm. up on your tongue, where else is it showing up in your digestive system? Mm -hmm. um, this could also be a time if you're consuming a lot of sugar, you might be experiencing loose bowel movements or IBS mm -hmm. symptoms. It's all mm -hmm. related to this dysbiosis. So these are just little signs and symptoms mm -hmm. that something is out of balance. Mm -hmm. and, and if you've eliminated sugar before, and that way you're, you're given the opportunity to know how your body feels with and without, you're, you're able to better tune in to know when the imbalance is happening and to know when to bring it back. 
into mm -hmm. chocolate. So that's why I'm drinking the chlorophyll water today. <laughs> I mean, I made those ice cream sandwiches on Mondays with Mel today and I made it, but I didn't eat it. I had a bite and I'm like, you know what? I, I don't think I can. And I left the rest of the batter in the refrigerator to make in a later time. Mm -hmm. So there's no rush. We don't have to cook all these cookies and eat them at once. Mm -hmm. We can slowly um, save them for later, right? And that's why baking, I mean, we're doing a lot of baking, but how about freezing? Right. Like, you know, mm -hmm. how about freezing? Or giving away. Things? And yeah. giving away, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, as I'm not much of a baker, to be honest, because I will eat them all. So I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, so, but I think, you know, m most bakers that I know, like you, will come to work with different things, you know, and so mm -hmm. since we're not doing that, you're making an effort to give stuff away, knock on people's doors, leave them out, you know, people yeah. can wait a few hours to let whatever mm -hmm. contaminants settle and then, and then bring them into their yeah. home and, it's yes. also a great way to share because yeah, people are, it's a way to connect mm -hmm. without having to be in the physical presence of somebody, which is pretty cool. Um, and then also a way to, to, to engage in your hobby, which is baking and then share it with people and not end up with Christmas level amounts. Yeah. Of food, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's a great idea. I mean, yeah, we're in week three, week four, depending on, you know, when you were able to stay home from work or if you're even able mm -hmm. to stay home from work. So the baked goods are accumulating and definitely we're missing connections. So yeah, driving them. I went to my parents' house this weekend. Can I just drop some of my cookies mm -hmm. on their front steps? You know, I, my baking I get from my mom. So she also had a cake ready for me to go to. So we just kind of swapped, <laughs> yeah. swapped dessert, but you know. You yeah. don't end up with a net zero. You're like, I end up with yeah. cake if I go and try and get rid of these cookies. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. yeah what's, exactly. um, what was in your, what's on your grocery list? Like, what did you get the last time you went out? I'm just curious. So the last time we went out, yeah. Um, I, you know, I picked up some fennel to help with digestion. Mm. Um, I'm finding that the kind of these herbal flavors are a bit more potent than usual. And I feel like that's, again, your body telling you that you should be eating more better, more licorice flavored things to kind of bring the digestion back in track. So definitely mm -hmm. fennel. I do love fennel for digestion. You can put it in salads, but I also like to cut it up and drizzle some olive oil and bake it in the oven. Oh. Um, it's really delicious like that as well. It's like a super mild oniony flavor, but not really. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. great with other vegetables. Hmm. Some romaine lettuce, mm -hmm. getting some more bitters in. Uh, always kale and spinach for smoothies, trying to keep up with that. Mm -hmm. And frozen berries, lots of frozen blueberries mm -hmm. to help bring down those sugar cravings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so like you're getting the sweet, but you're also getting it in the form of um, lower glycemic index. And I love that idea of fennel. Heart. That's awesome. Yeah, so fennel is yeah. also terminative, which means it helps absorb gas in our intestines. So it helps yes. with like the bloating, the. the which indigestion. is so common with eating too much sugar. Yeah, bloating right. and yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. I, I'm also sort of one of these people that's no nonsense about foods, so not. Uh, sometimes you know it, it, is, it serves a very utilitarian purpose which I think mm -hmm. is helpful for coaching people around it because but I also eat everything so that's also a problem mm -hmm. because a, a, a lot of people <laughs> care a lot how their food looks and tastes I'm not so picky like that yeah <laughs> um but I always tell people so I, I usually just stick to the same things so I don't have to think like I'm listening mm -hmm. to a podcast and I'm just going around the aisles and it's like the kale, sweet potatoes, turkey, yes. chicken, like I'm just doing the normal things. Usually buy unsweetened cocoa baking chocolate. That's my chocolate fix. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's a fan. It's super bitter, but I, I like that bitter because I think, you know, in our Yuveta, we talk about the six tastes or even in Chinese medicine, they have the five tastes and this idea of balancing all six tastes mm -hmm. in a meal or in a day. And we don't get much bitter in, in the foods that we typically consume yes. in North America and standard American diet. And bitter balances out sweet, which we get in abundance. Because mm -hmm. when we talk about sweet, we don't just talk about, we're not just talking about um, the actual sugary foods or fruits. Mm -hmm. We're talking also about things like rice and beans and stuff that have uh, higher carbohydrate content, which is still sweet and not bad. It's not something that someone has to cut out. Those are not bad foods, but it's mm -hmm. this idea of balancing it with bitter. So yes. having your rapini with your beans like you were doing. You know? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. Yeah, and uh, definitely we need, we need a lot of bitter foods. And, you know, spring is here and our livers are right. ready to detoxify. So it's almost like your body, our bodies are craving more bitter foods. It's almost mm -hmm. natural that 
uh, we're moving more towards these liver cleansing and liver supporting foods. So, mm -hmm. you know, get a head start. Yeah, so rapini are usually in my, rapini or broccolini are usually on my shopping list, whatever I can find, mm -hmm. or broccoli, one of the three. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's in, what's on your shopping list? You usually do turkey, sweet potatoes. I always grab some sweet potatoes. It's funny, like there's yeah. always, yeah, there's always this like sweet potato kale thing. For the last yes. couple of years, there's been this. So yeah, so I got, I got, um, I always get um, clamshells of um, salad mix. Um, I usually do get a rotisserie chicken, um, just mm -hmm. easy. Um, and I like to have ready available protein sources because it's not that easy to have a grab and go protein. And so I like yes. to have that. Or mm -hmm. if I ever cook proteins, um, I'll batch cook it. Um, I always get, I always have ground flax seeds. I, I needed yeah. to top, uh, top up apple cider vinegar always have coffee that that yeah. will often so I, i'm a pantry person so i have a lot of stuff in the pantry but every time i run out of coffee that's like oh i gotta go grocery shopping <laughs> whereas yeah. other stuff i'm like oh i can make it work like i have frozen kale i have um yeah. you know i have there's no coffee yeah. substitute i guess yeah, yeah exactly so like there's always something i can work with except when i run out of coffee then i'm like yeah uh, i'm waiting in line you uh, gotta go keeping my two meter yeah um yeah. yeah and i think you know, just random cravings, like craving seaweed. So I pay attention mm. to those kind of cravings when they're random mm. like that, because like, we you know, there's not, so seaweed has iodine. There's not a lot of iodine in, uh, in a lot of different things. And so yes. I'm honoring that. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's then, such a great tip too, right? We're craving seaweed or sushi. Um, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely pick up some seaweed and focus on that iodine, any kind of sea vegetable. Right. Which we need for liver ovaries. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, thyroid ovaries thyroid, yeah. uh, and adrenals. And so iodine is super important. So, uh, but I'm interested. Yeah. Let's talk more about the lymphatics. You're mentioning the bumps behind the ears. Yes, and... The bumps behind the ears. Yeah. Or just acne in general could be a lymph like a, a signal that the lymphatic system is a big sluggish. We're at home a lot. I mean, I don't think I'm getting my steps that I usually try to get. Mm -hmm. walking around isn't as much as it used to be and we're not getting up every hour to like greet patients as we would at the clinic or mm -hmm. so on and so forth so you can be sitting down for a long time there's a lot of lymphatic stagnation we're not getting that circulation mm -hmm. of the circulatory system so it can pump our lymphatic system mm -hmm. and it's causing things like swollen i've had patients tell me that they've had swollen lymph glands mm -hmm. during this mm -hmm. time so definitely um you know not covid related or anything thank goodness but just general an aggravation of the lymphatic system for people who mm -hmm. typically get lymphatic system aggravation mm -hmm. so sinuses so maybe sinus headaches um mucousy saliva or stuffy noses when you wake up could all be signals that the lymphatic mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. is sluggish um like dull skin, acne. dull skin, dry mm -hmm. skin, dry mm -hmm. hair, dry mm -hmm. hair. I've been having, I mean, I'll, part of it is that I'm sure we're all missing our haircuts right now, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but definitely dry hair, uh, mm -hmm. dry skin. Mm -hmm. And the spring, again, the springtime mm -hmm. is a time to uh, reactivate and recirculate the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. Things tend to be dry and, and transitioning during this time anyway. So the lymphatic system needs to really be supported. So things like dry skin brushing, mm -hmm. um, is always good, you know, jumping up and down. If you live in a condo like me, I think doing the stairs, like I'm trying to do the stairs up to the 23rd floor. And back. Whoa, okay. Good idea. Good yeah. yeah. <laughs> really like pumping that, that energy. I'm going for walks, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Swimming, is great. Swimming is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or hot cold showers. I love hot mm -hmm. cold showers. Help um, move the circulatory system and the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. And good for immune, right? I think mm -hmm. it's important mm -hmm. to remember that the lymphatic system is. Um, very intertwined with our immune system. Mm -hmm. So right now we're all thinking about how can we support our immune system the best way that we can. So when we do go to the grocery store, we can feel confident that we can handle, you know, whatever is happening around us. So supporting that immune, that lymphatic system by, um, by, you know, exercise, exercise mm -hmm. is a big way to do it. And it's a challenge for a lot of us right now. So doing mm -hmm. what you can around the house, cleaning. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of us are cleaning a lot. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was like a, yeah, a COVID closet cleanup group or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But let, maybe we should, maybe we should just also clarify what the lymphatic system is for people yeah. that don't know. It's, um, so it's a, a circulatory system where it's kind of like our disposal system where old cells yeah. go to die and get um, rerouted um, back into the venous circulation and then eliminated from the body and it's a passive system so you have your arteries that are that are actively pumping blood and then mm -hmm. you have your veins which 
are more responding to um, our muscles moving to get them moving back to the heart. Yes, our lymphatic, our lymphatic vessels. Yeah, they're they're passive, like you said. So if they run right alongside our vascular system, so if the blood is pumping and our veins and arteries are moving, then just by mm -hmm. default, the natural rhythm of the lymphatic system will help pump always towards the heart, um, mm -hmm. so the major pump, so we can flush out all that kind of dirty lymphatic mm -hmm. fluid through the blood system and out through our, um, our kidneys or our bowels. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we're not moving, we're really at a loss for our lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. But there's also other things that we could be doing in terms of cleansing our lymphatic system in terms of herbals. I mean, I know you love herbals in your clinic. I love them too. I just love teas. Mm -hmm. um, things like echinacea tea, really good at cleansing the lymphatic system mm -hmm. and boosting the immune system as mm -hmm. well. So, and I love, I work with a lot of kids and families. So echinacea also safe for kids, right? And pregnant right. women too. It's in, it's, yeah, so it's a good uh, preventative for getting sick. Like once you're already sick, I think you know it's other that can come into place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think for just keeping the immune system strong. So for people concerned, well, we can't say anything mm -hmm. about preventing or treating. No, anything nothing. yeah no. but it is a um immune system stimulant actually I mean modulator so it can help with there is some research and some herbalists will prescribe it for autoimmune conditions too because it can help calm down an overactive immune system yes so it's yeah it's a great herb yeah and also it's starting to grow this time of year i think right it's um, i was gonna say if you're yeah. thinking about your i mean i try to put some herbs out on the balcony Last year I missed my echinacea, but I I definitely want to plant some echinacea this year. Mm. Um, try to make your herbal gardens as medicinal as po possible. I mm. think it's a good tip. We don't know yeah. how long we'll be inside, so at least we have something to nurture, mm. um, harvest, and and you know cook. I think that's another really good tip: cooking with medicinal herbs as much mm. as you can mm -hmm. at this time of year. So lots of rosemary in my meat mm. dishes. Mm -hmm. and my um, my veggie dishes. I love rosemary. It increases cognitive function. I love mm -hmm. burning rosemary or diffusing rosemary in my diffuser. It mm -hmm. helps with mental capacity. It helps stimulate, mm -hmm. and it also helps with liver function. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, focusing on liver health mm -hmm. so that we can help with those sugar cravings. Yeah, rosemary is one of my favorite herbs because it mm -hmm. works on like all the things I care about or work with. Right. <laughs> so we. Have Cognitive functions increases brain um, circulation. So it's like mm -hmm. for, you know, after traumatic brain injury or even for just focus and concentration. And, um, and it's also a huge detoxifier. And a lot of people don't like the word detox, but mm -hmm. detoxification is something that's happening in our bodies all the time through yes. the liver and yeah. kidneys. And when we say herbs are detoxifiers, they're just boosting the function of those organs, which we know pharmaceuticals don't do. There's no drug that will like, enhance your liver function but we have rosemary and we have milk thistle and we have uh, burdock and these antioxidant herbs that mm -hmm. can help us be more efficient detoxifiers and so like people with estrogen dominance rosemary is really amazing yeah. Um, yeah. you know like any kind of hormonal issue i find it's awesome yeah. pms uh, i really yeah. like it yeah and i think yeah. an herbalist matthew wood recommends you take white wine and you pack it full of rosemary and you let it sit and then you're like it's, it's very interesting, but it's a really easy way you can make a tincture, um, mm -hmm. an herbal concoction yeah. rosemary with crappy That's wine. So yeah. <laughs> I love that. I mean, in Italy, rosemary grows wild. So you can walk through, you know, and you can see bushes of wild rosemary everywhere. And it's such a big part of culinary tradition there. And it's funny that you talk about the wine because I'm sure there's people in Italy putting their rosemary in their wine and having a party yeah <laughs> yeah to totally yeah or and then there was also a study about um you know so barbecue we know creates these aromatic hydrocarbons mm. which can be toxic so if you're barbecuing meat or even vegetables or even baking potatoes and baking things in the oven this yes. um this high heat, heat. High mm -hmm. exactly high temperature cooking can cause these carcinogens to form but if you add rosemary to whatever you're cooking especially barbecuing completely neutralizes the carcinogenic effect and actually enhances the ox antioxidant effect. So it's better overall for you. So that's amazing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I think it's, it's funny how you say that. And then you're looking at the Mediterranean diet, which is one of the healthiest diets studied and using a lot, like cooking a lot of red meat and lamb, for example, with a lot of rosemary and spices. Right. Um, mm. It's traditional. Yeah. So looking at our mm. traditional 
modes of eating as well as hints into you know what's healthy and what should we be doing right now especially mm -hmm. since barbecue season is around the corner mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. a really good tip like I think it's it's a good point too and to get into is like when we think of like this food's good this food's bad it's not like that right because when you have a uh, comprehensive diet where you're combining things you know, it's a completely different context. If you're eating Slim Jims, like these like pepperette sticks from Dollarama versus eating lamb that's had rosemary on it or that you put rosemary on, totally different form of red meat, right? Or we can yes. red meat's not good for you. Um, so when we're talking, yeah, like with food, it comes in an entire cultural and, um, and health-minded context. So that's kind of cool yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. And nutrition is so complicated in terms of how it interacts with our body because we're alive, foods are alive, things just kind of uh, interconnect right. like that. So it's hard to say like this is the healthiest diet and this is a very unhealthy diet. Mm -hmm. But focusing on things like we mentioned, just like sticking to simple foods in their whole forms as best as you can is the best way to go. And mm -hmm. then tweaking to what you need to do, right? If you're you know, if you can't digest meat properly or if, for, or if you have hormonal issues and you need more animal protein to support your mm -hmm. hormone levels like that, go doing what fits right for you. There's no healthiest mm -hmm. diet. It's whatever works the best for you and whatever you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And anything is better than the standard American diet. So exactly. Yeah. <laughs> whether you're vegan yeah. or paleo or keto or whatever, if you're not, if you're not sad, S-A-D. Yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You're doing good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I like to tell people to, um, so when people are like thinking like, because this overwhelm, this idea of overwhelm when it comes to meal prep and planning and it's like, what should I cook? I don't know what to eat. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. um, so frozen pizza is the answer, yeah. right? But you know, it's really about these, just these categories. And actually I think the food guide isn't so bad. It was terrible in the past, but this new version of it's actually pretty good where you're thinking like, vegetables fruit some sort of fat healthy fat olive oil avocado coconut oil yes nut seeds some sort of protein whether that be legumes or nuts and seeds or an animal product like eggs or chicken or something like that mm -hmm. or fish and that's it yeah that's <laughs> and you're it. good yeah you know and a carbohydrate if you want you know so the carbohydrates i wouldn't say are essential in that our body doesn't need them to function we can make our own carbohydrates but if you want to round out your meal um, you know, support exercise, support your hormonal health, support your mm -hmm. cravings, and yeah, adding in some carbs in the form of legumes or whole grains or root vegetables or even fruit. Mm -hmm. So it's like those four pillars. And when you have those four things, your vegetables, your carbs, your, uh, your fat and your protein, like you're good. So that could look good, like yeah. avocado, eggs, and spinach, you know, um, yeah. or salmon yeah. and potatoes and a salad with avocado. Like it doesn't yeah, exactly. have to be fancy. Exactly. Tonight I'm making salmon with broccoli and some mm. grass-fed butter mm. and a salad. So mm. it's really simple, but it'll, you know, it sounds simple, but the truth is once you start eating, it's very filling, it's very satisfying, mm. it's very, very much energy producing. So it's not mm. going to deplete you. Having sugar or high carbohydrate foods are going to make you feel tired. And by doing them, by eating them every single day, you're setting yourself up for like a lot of fatigue mm -hmm. and lethargy and it's going to affect your hormones long term. So, mm -hmm. so focusing like on the building blocks, the macronutrients to get us through. Totally. And, and looking at it as like a way to nourish, not, not punish or to feel bad yeah. about ourselves too, because it's like, yeah, if you have been eating a lot of sugar in the last few weeks, it's okay. And this is a, an opportunity to reach out, you know, and it, like, it's yeah. all about getting back on track. Um, it's yeah. all about balance balance is not a like a static thing it's it's yeah. actually you know we're in a state of balancing constantly our bodies yeah. are our lifestyle is and so it's like I feel like if people get off track or feel discouraged don't shy away you are not judgmental with your patients and clients I'm not judgmental we we're here to help people get back on track and get back to yeah. their goals yeah, exactly and and not to be discouraged you know you've been doing really well and then you've had a couple of weeks where you where you're eating a lot more sugar or you forgot about the healthy foods that you need to nourish your mm -hmm. health and your health condition. Uh, it's no, it's no reason to kind of get off and get, and get sad about it and kind of be, beat up yourself about it. Or like you said, you know, be embarrassed or feel embarrassed mm -hmm. to contact your support network for help. Mm -hmm. It's just the way we roll, right? Things mm -hmm. ebb and flow always in life and health is the ability just to kind of push mm -hmm. our ways back into balance naturally, gently, 
Mm. Um, yeah, we can we can do it. Yeah, I mean, Easter like, is a week away, like I mentioned. So right. <laughs> meets are around the corner. They're going to be on your doorstep, maybe for me. Who knows, right? So <laughs> There's going to be mini so, eggs in yeah. everyone's future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's like, I think, you know, the point is no one's perfect. And, um, and like you said, you're like, you know, I've been noticing I've been eating a lot of sugar lately. And so, th- but this is the way I have learned to bring myself back. Yes. And you're able to kind of, with your knowledge of nutrition, sort of, guide yourself back and I think sometimes we can do that and sometimes we need a little bit of support to just Mm -hmm. you know because we got a lot going on right now it's not easy for us right now for people in general so yeah a lot of people are cutting off their usual support networks Mm -hmm. um like seeing their ND or seeing their nutritionist homeopath um I guess feeling overwhelmed I mean I've I've Mm -hmm. definitely felt overwhelmed at home a few times trying to get used to the new normal Mm -hmm. but you know now that everyone has hopefully by now, or at least by the end of the week, sort of gotten used to or had an idea with what life's going to look like, at least for the next month or so, you connect back with your, with your support network, with your friends, with your practitioners, with whoever you can. A lot of people are offering telemed appointments, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Any way that we can connect back is Mm going to support overall health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's, there's uh, telemed appointments that both of us are offering, but then also in your group, your Instagram group, you have Mondays with Mel, I'm doing a, yes. a meditation every day, every morning this week. So yeah. there's a lot going on that, that um, people- There's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone's offering so much, which is wonderful. I feel like this is the community really coming together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is good. Yeah, I've, yes. had, a, I've had customers um, or I guess followers from Italy asking me to translate my recipe so I can send it over to them. So that's been really cool too. So, so the whole awesome. world is getting on board with what can we do? We have a lot of time now mm-hmm. and things that we perhaps have been putting off, like getting our health back on track or establishing some kind of ideal nutrition plan or whatever mm-hmm. we're going through. This mm-hmm. is the time to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause like you, I think you mentioned this before we started recording, but we're all cooking a lot at home now. Mm-hmm. So it's an opportunity to start mm-hmm. practicing and start learning your favorite recipes, your go-tos for when you're back at work, you have your go-to list of recipes or your favorite foods. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Like what, what you're doing right now is inspiring people and getting people in the kitchen and creative and making things that they would probably never consider like mm-hmm. ice cream sandwiches that have literally nothing a traditional ice cream sandwich would typically <laughs> contain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, instead of having a salad, make an ice cream sandwich salad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know much. if it's a direct transition, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, it's better than running to the corner store and getting like an Oreo ice cream sandwich or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. This is exciting. So, yeah, and I love how you said it's an ability to be creative because I feel like it's so important. A lot of people like to bake and cook and a lot of people don't, don't know yet that they're actually so good at yes. cooking and so good at baking because they haven't had the opportunity. Yeah, totally. Right. It's that fear. And so once you sort of break down that fear by what you're doing, which is showing people what it looks like to yeah. put it together and to go through the process. And it's something that you you were saying actually before we started recording about how, you know, sometimes your videos aren't perfect, that like your it wasn't turning yeah. off or like the blender almost broke. And so all these things are happening. It's kind of like yeah. Julia Child style where it's like <laughs> making all these seemingly complicated, delicious things. Um, and, you know, the end result is this beautiful picture that I have on my Instagram feed. But look at this messy process. And Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's so beautiful. Yeah, that's so true. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a whole story behind the post so who knows what happens in there but if you tune in live you can see exactly what happens exactly you get the raw unedited version and you get to see the real the real thing, the real <laughs> the thing. exactly yeah well, so people can find you at mel holistic health on instagram mel's holistic health on instagram or you can find me at mel the homeopath.com so lots of ways to find me um yeah mm-hmm. and i hope to make some new friends Yes. All right. So on social media. Thanks yeah, so much, we'll Tanya, put, for having me. We'll put me links on. where people can follow you, and then yeah, and uh, and I'll be tuning in to learn how to make. Yeah, amazing. So good. All right, all right. Yeah, and I'll be tuning into your uh, meditation challenge as well. That sounds so wonderful, and I think it's really needed right now. So good job. Mm-hmm. Eight a.m. Uh, Eastern time on my Facebook group, which we'll put up as Excellent. well. Excellent. Um, but yeah, it, it's like you know sometimes we do these things because we want to stay on track so it was kind of a selfish endeavor to be meditating every morning and know that I can't back out because (laughs) I said I would do it yeah yeah and so I think your thing is kind of similar right it's like okay I gotta 
think of a recipe to make and I have to do something and, and prepare something and exactly but then at the same time I meal prep a little bit too so it's been it's been good yeah so mm -hmm. yeah excellent thank you so You're much welcome. all right it's yeah. great to talk to you yeah you too I'll see you soon, see you soon.